Seeing none, I'll move forward to Alla Jackson with the city attorney's office. When we did the orientation, thank you, when we uh, did the orientation uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Lou fussed at me because she said I was the one who made the meeting run late. So she said I had five minutes. Uh, <laughs> um, we covered a discussion of the Richmond uh, form of government uh, and council's role in that government. We talked about the Freedom of Information Act. We talked about the Conflicts of Interest Act. We talked about Dillon's rule, and we talked about the attorney-client relationship. I'm going to try to get the highlights of each one of those that we talked about with the new members uh, here this evening, and I do mean highlights. Um, with respect to uh, council's role in our form of government, I want to talk about three things. First, voting requirements. All action by council is five votes, not a majority of those present, five votes. There are certain exceptions, budget amendments, the veto override, special use permits, bond authorizations, all by charter require six votes. Under council's rules of procedure, expediting a resolution so that it can be considered the same night it is introduced requires six votes. And lastly, uh, real estate conveyances where the city is conveying property to a third party requires by state law a three-quarter, well, constitution and state law requires a three-quarters vote, which means seven. Um, in addition to voting requirements, I want to briefly remind everyone uh, that the Budget is your opportunity to make your statement about what you want to see for city government. Budget amendments may only be approved if the mayor recommends them. So mid-year corrections only if the mayor recommends them, and then that requires a set of six votes. The last thing I want to touch on that is part of the uh, council role is employee relations. And this is really the place where uh, Richmond's charter distinguishes it from your traditional strong mayor form of government. In the traditional strong mayor form of government, he's not only the chief executive, the mayor is also the chief administrator. Uh, in Richmond's government, the role of chief administrator is delegated to the chief administrative officer rather than to the mayor. And both the mayor and council, all members of council, are subject to a provision in the charter. 5.03 that deals with how uh, all of you may deal with employees of the city. Um, and I'm going to read large parts of this because they're very important. First, the mayor and members of council may communicate publicly or privately their approval or disapproval of the performance of any particular city employee. I strongly recommend that you never disapprove in a public way. It can create constitutional issues, constitutional claims. Um, privately, you have the right to <coughs> convey your thoughts. Um, you may recommend persons for hiring. You may recommend persons for disciplining and termination to the CAO. The language that deals with the line between you and the mayor on the one hand and other employees of the city on the other hand I'm just going to read, except for the purpose of inquiry, the mayor, council, and its members shall deal with the administrative services solely through the chief administrative officer. And neither the mayor, council, nor any member thereof shall give orders, either publicly or privately, to any subordinate of the chief administrative officer. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can you repeat that? Repeat that. <clears throat> Except for the purpose of inquiry, the mayor, the council, and its members shall deal with the administrative services solely through the chief administrative officer, the CAO. And neither the mayor, council, nor any member thereof shall give orders, either publicly or privately, to any subordinate of the CAO. Yes, ma'am. But if there's an issue, you can go to the CAO. Yes, ma'am. That would be like fire chief, police chief, anybody. 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 You, may, you may discuss with 
the CAO, the performance of any city employee with you, and you may ask questions of any city employee. What you may not do is tell them what to do. In other words, you can say, I think this guy is great. I hope you consider giving them a promotion. What you can't say is, give this guy a promotion. Nor can you say to the guy, give this other guy a promotion. Right. Okay. That would fall into our staff, too? Um, yes, but for different reasons. Um, with, your, with, with your staff, you have a council chief of staff, and most of the reporting relationships, other than liaisons, are supposed to run through her. With respect to the other uh, appointees, the folks who are here today, uh, either the charter or state law says that we work for you, but the people who work for us work for us. So in other words, if we need something researched, instead of just saying, um, I'm looking for someone in the league, well, yeah, Haskell, do this for me, please. It, it, it's more appropriate to go to Alan and ask that question. The same is for our staff. Instead of asking Steve Skinner or Steve Taylor or somebody to do something, we would ask Lou, this is what I need done, and then she would assign it to the appropriate party. Okay, but there, if there was a problem with an employee, we would go to the Yes. That would be your first stop. Any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry, was that the end of your? That was, unfortunately, the first of the five. Very good. Please, please continue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, FOIA. Um, please remember that all records that you create whose nature is city business are public records. So if you use your home PC uh, to do city business, that's still a public record. I strongly recommend that you not use your home PC to do it, to, to use those, to, to, to do city business, because if you do, you create a record on your PC and it renders it subject to disclosure under FOIA. Um, please remember that your uh, smartphone texts and your voicemails also are considered public records. Um, there are any number of localities, uh, Detroit comes to mind, where texts proved to be extremely embarrassing, in fact, incriminating. Um, so please remember those are public records. Um, in terms of meetings, a meeting is defined as three or more of you or a committee or quorum of a committee. If you meet that definition to do public business, then you have a meeting and notice is required, regardless of whether it's a regular meeting or a special meeting, that meeting must be open to the public. Um, Closed meetings, even a meeting which is held for the sole purpose of going into closed session still has to be an open meeting to start. You have a process that you have to go through. Please remember that what happens in a closed meeting is subject to disclosure only if the council as a group uh, says it can be disclosed. Conflicts of Interest Act, really quickly. Please don't forget your financial disclosure forms. I'm sure by now you've done them for this year. Uh, in future years, they're due by January 15th. Um, Dillon's rule. Dillon's rule is basically the General Assembly's arm on your shoulder. It says, you may only do what we say you can do. Um, when, I, when we did this for the orientations, Haskell had a great example of what we hear from time to time that I had to cut him off because oh, this, uh, all the time. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm already over time. I'm working on it. Um, a lot of you may have an, an opportunity to go someplace like National League of Cities, uh, some other national organization where you hear, where you will hear all kinds of great things being done uh, in other states, in other localities that are terrific ideas. But if they're not authorized by Virginia law, you can't do it. Uh, so please keep that in mind that when you hear about great ideas, you may or you may not have been authorized by Big Brother across the street to do it. Last thing is the attorney-client relationship. Um, and uh, I'm going to be really brief here. 
State Bar says, and the charter says, that I, the city attorney, and the lawyers who work for me have a responsibility to the organization, not to any individual member of council. Uh, we have an obligation to, we have a job to do uh, for the mayor, for department heads, and so on, but our ultimate professional duty runs to the organization. How that gets applied is way beyond the scope of what we're going to be able to talk about today. The reason I bring it up is because I want to talk quickly about confidentiality issues. Um, you have adopted rules, uh, as has the administration, that you, when you do legislation, when you propose legislation, up until the time it is introduced, it is a confidence between us as lawyers and you as individual patrons. We will not disclose the legislation that you want us to draft until such time as it is introduced, unless you say so. Similarly, when the mayor's uh, organization creates legislation, asks us to, to do things, we will not disclose what he has asked until it is introduced, with very limited exceptions that have to do with putting the agenda together. As to other matters, you have no formal rules. We have, as a practice, with respect to other matters, the same thing. What you individually tell me, unless there's some major injury going to occur to the, to the organization, or unless you're telling me you're going to commit crime, uh, I'm not going to disclose it to other members of council or to the administration, unless you say it's OK. Now, that is a very absolute sounding rule. The same thing applies to the administration and their dealings with us. Until the organization adopts a different rule, that is simply a way that we understand y'all want to do business. <coughs> um, and the last thing I'll say is means of communication. Um, we off, often communicate by way of email. Um, Many of you, if not all of you, have your email accounts set up so that your liaisons uh, receive copies of what you get um, and automatically, whether they are sent to them or not. Um, please have a conversation with your liaisons that stuff that comes from your attorneys is likely to be confidential and uh, ought not to be disclosed without talking to you and perhaps to us. Any questions on that point? Mr. President. Yes, sir, Mr. Hill. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Jackson, when you speak of the client, uh, if I am, if I fill out a card request or uh, send you an email or whatever communication, uh, well, let me back up here. With respect to legislation, if I'm listed as a patron on a bill, am I the client? No, you are still not the client, but because the client, meaning the city council, has adopted a rule in its rules of procedure and in its rules that apply to uh, how legislation is handled, we treat it as though you were. In other words, when you fill out, well, not so much a card request, that's an internal council chief of staff uh, document. If you felt, if, if you ask them to prepare uh, an O&R, <coughs> ordinance or resolution. Until that document is introduced, we are going to treat you as though you were the client. Uh, and we will not disclose the contents of an O&R that you signed off on to other people except, again, for purposes of agenda preparation, uh, unless you say it's OK. But technically, you, mm -hmm. you aren't the client, but we treat you like So what is my authority as your client to list other patrons on the paper? As whatever you want to do. It is your privilege we won't disclose it to other people unless you say it's okay, but you're certainly free to get co-patrons as many as you want. If you have five co-patrons, though, we will only talk about your paper among those five co-patrons. We won't okay. disclose it to any of the others. No. Thank you. Again, without your consent. No. You say it's okay, and we'll talk about it. Same thing is true uh, as between you and the administration. Sometimes y'all are working together uh, to put together uh, some kind of, of legislation. And if you say it's okay to talk to them, we will. Vice versa. Oftentimes they'll be working with you. Um, 
we won't discuss it with a member of council until they say it's okay. So it's, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I can introduce legislation with co patrons of which I have not made aware of that legislation. I, thought I don't think that's a legal question so much as it is yeah. a good idea or best practice issue. If the person doesn't know their name's going to be on it, I would not recommend we get in the habit of putting other folks' names on the legislation. Yeah, that, that wouldn't, yeah, that would, that, that wouldn't get, I mean, I wouldn't know that you haven't talked to them, and so I might right. talk to them because you put their name on it, right. but it probably okay. wouldn't be a good idea as the president says. All right, I'm sorry. What I thought I heard you say in the beginning was that only the person that you're communicating with directly, uh, well, I'm sorry, my original question was, am I a client if I'm listed as a patron on the paper? Your answer to that was no, as I heard it. Uh, however, uh, I heard you say that you would have to communicate, that you may introduce something legally, but with other people's names on it, but that uh, but if I, the principal sponsor of something, say it's okay to talk to A, B, and C, then that's a lie. Yeah, again, prior, 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 to, prior to introduction, okay. once it's introduced, it's public record. Right, okay. Prior to that time, uh, if you are the person who is the patron of a, of, of, a, of a paper, we will talk with you, but only with you. That doesn't make you the client. It simply means we treat you as though you were a client and as though our communications were confidential. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Mr. President. Parker, and then after Parker, I'm going to ask that we let Alan get through the rest of it. I think to Chris's point about quote patronage, if you are the client and you want something to remain confidential until it's introduced and you're asking people to join you, you might want to explain to them that you don't want them talking publicly about this until it's introduced. Because when you're talking to other council members, we don't fall under the same client privilege. So you'd have to explain that to the people that you're talking to outside of that relationship, if that's something that you intend. The privilege belongs to the client or to the person who treated as the client. Meaning you can talk to anybody you like to, we can't, for one. Go ahead. That, that was it. I, that was I, it? I, I ran through it. I took twice as much time as she said I could have. She said I could have five minutes. I took only ten. I didn't come up with that rule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in an effort to retrieve ourselves from this uh, meeting agenda debacle that Alan has put us through, I'm going to go on and move forward to Mr. Hester with the city assessors. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 